The following is a mechanically reproduced announcement, previously recorded from a live scheduled program on 24.7 The Stream. This is not a live broadcast. All guests, callers, and hosts granted 24.7 The Stream permission to be recorded. This program may contain strong language or topics not suited for younger listeners. Parental discretion is advised. Thank you for listening to 24.7 The Stream. Well, hello, hello. This is Alex, your host with Inform Nation Radio. And, and you got your co-host here, David Sick. How's everyone doing today? Today's a beautiful day on Chicagoland. 70 degrees out here today. Wow, nice and sunny. Summer's around the corner. I think we had a little bit of rain before I awoke this morning, but uh, it was a pretty nice day it turned out to be, actually. It's always those morning storms that make the... Afternoon's always so much better. Yeah, it makes it a delight, you know. Yeah. When the weather outside is frightful, <laughs> it's so delightful. <laughs> it's not Christmas time yet. Uh, but yeah, we uh, actually we wanted to talk a little bit about last week. We gave everyone uh, a little bit of a homework assignment to do, and we were talking about freedoms, what it means to be free, free in your mind, free in your body, free in your soul, mm-hmm. free in society. And uh, we wanted to hear everyone's take on, you know, what it actually means to be free. So anytime during the conversation today, uh, we're going to leave the chat room open. Uh, We're going to be reading off anybody's comments about their freedoms or what it means to be free. And also we're going to be opening up the phone lines anytime during our conversation today. Anytime you want to throw something in today, uh, the phone number for the direct studio line is 630-445-1213. That's 630-445-1213. One three. Call in. Let us know what you think. Let us what you think about freedom and what we're going to be talking about today. And what are we going to be talking about today? What we're going to be talking about today. Uh, I think we go through a lot of this radio show, and we we start to refer to uh, these certain people as they. Yeah, the they. The they. We're always talking about they. Who are they? What do they want? Or you know, what are they doing to us? And as us, and as I say, as the population, the populace of people. Mm-hmm. What are they doing to us? So you know? today we're going to be naming names. We're going to be giving you exactly who they are and what you can do to combat them. Yeah, because we want to stay away from they. That's, yeah. the, that's the most important thing, and you want to stay away from they. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, we should lead off into they uh, by coming, uh, you know, what they, what they do and what they control in your life. Yep. And they control the money. They control your freedoms. They control the media. They control the media. They control what you're eating. They control the laws. They control, you know, what you're taking in your body as far as, like, pills, vaccines, things like that. Pharmaceutical. Big pharma. Big pharma. They control the agriculture. Yes, they do. They control big business everywhere. That's who they are. They control the advertising. All the advertising you see. They control it. And they is, um, I'd like to say, uh, for lack of a better word, but the elite. Yeah. But then I can't say all lead are they because there are a lot of people out there that are very good. And I think there's True. there's probably a struggle between the good and evil of these elite people and uh, you know where we're coming to in the nation and kind of where we're headed and I think there's a maybe a power struggle up at top up there, you know, between good and evil, the duality of things, who's going to win. True. I mean that duality, I mean it extends all throughout any society, any culture, even among the elite. There's that that control force about the elite that's the, the bad side that want the bad things to happen. And then there's the part about the elite that aren't so bad. Like they know they're in an elite position and they have to, you know, work within this elite position. Maybe they want they can't win every time, but they're going to be able to get some good things done and they're going to be able to stop a lot of bad things. And uh, the thing is with the elite is they have a lot of money. And the thing is, if you want to have influence in this world, you're going to need a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, what better way to have a lot of money than control the money? If you control the money, you care not who makes the laws because, what is it, what's the... Who was it? Mayor Amschel Rothschild, the patriarch of the Rothschilds, said, Give me the power to control a nation's currency, and I care not who makes the laws. Isn't that so true? Look what's going on today. It is very true. I mean, you have a whole bunch of lobbying going on up in Congress right now for corporations. I mean, we are in... I mean, for we are in a fascist state right now. For lack of a better word, people I mean, say, "Is fascism coming?" It's it's here. It's here, man. It's, it's here, here already. I mean, you look at the people up top, you know, bouncing back from corporations to political powers and everything, True. making policies. That whole revolving door of like corporate heads and then government heads. The whole cycle. There, yeah. There's just a cycle of you know almost tyranny 
and fascism going along in the United States right now that I think a lot of people are unaware of. Yep. And, uh, you know, you shouldn't worry. Okay, you know what? We heard this the other day. And you shouldn't actually worry about anything that we're talking about on here. We just want you to be aware. So don't worry. Just be aware. Because when, if anything does happen or if you ever notice anything, it's better off to be aware than to worry about it. Because So that shock factor doesn't hit you. Yeah, so you know, when you worry about things, you're going to instantly, when it happens, you're going to react. You're going to automatically go do something in reaction to. Uh -huh. But if you're aware of it already and it happens, you already have a logical standpoint of what you're going to do with that. True. Because you already knew about it. Yeah, so you're not, it doesn't hit you with a surprise. It's saying, okay, I knew, kind of knew this was coming, kind of saw a little bit of it, saw the writing on the wall. So now I'm not hit with the whole, oh my God, it's happening. Now I can be like, okay, it's happening. What am I going to do about it? And that goes with anything, anything at all throughout life, that you, in, even involved in your life. If you have a little sense of like a little sixth sense on looking into the future and seeing things kind of happen, don't worry about it. Just be aware so you can react accordingly down yeah. the line. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we wanted to get into the discussion, and I wrote a couple questions on that we're going to go over on uh, today's show. The topic is, and it's also a question, is who are they? Uh, and the questions that we want to ask are, what do they want? What have they done previously or in the past or now? What is their master plan? And is there any evidence against any of this? Because, I mean, that's what most people, I think, are looking for is, okay, well, you're telling me that they're doing these things, but do you have any evidence to back it up? And uh, there is a lot, a lot of evidence out there. You just got to go digging for it. It's, it's not on the television, everyone. Yeah, yeah. You're it's not going to find, find it on the television, and you're not going to find it through a simple little Google search. Yeah. You're going to have to understand that. You're going to have to go look into books. You have to read actual quotes by these people of what they're saying. You have to read their own books because in their own books, they admit what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, last week, was it? Yeah, last week we were talking about the, we played the JFK speech, right? Was that last week or the week before? It was like a couple weeks ago, but yeah. Yeah, we played the JFK speech talking about conspiracy. And, I mean, even a president, you know, I showed one of my friends in this past week, and he was quite shocked, actually, that John F. Kennedy actually came out and said this about there being this big conspiracy that we cannot fathom in our own heads. You know, they yeah. resort to infiltration instead of... Uh, what is it? Armies by like, day. The like guerrillas by night instead yeah. of armies by day. Yeah, so, you know... A lot of higher-ups know what's going on, and that's why we say there's probably a struggle going on at the top of this, because there are still good people out there. Don't ever forget that. Yes. There's a lot of good still out there. It's just if you look around almost in modern-day society, it's like, well, who's taking the cake right now? Is it the good or is it the evil? I mean, what do you think, David? Who do you think's taking the cake right now? I think, well, the thing is that everybody, what everybody sees through the television and mass media is a lot of the evil taking control because mm -hmm. everything you see on the news and television has a bad connotation toward anything. Mm -hmm. But people need to understand that that they there's a lot of good in the they. And like people like Rand Paul. Yeah. And we can talk about Rand Paul today. He's running for president, libertarian, third party candidate. Son of Ron Paul, anybody Ron Paul supporters well, he's actually, out there? He's actually running under Republican, but he is a Libertarian. libertarian yes. yes. He's running under a Republican ticket like his father did. His father was more of a Libertarian as well, too. Mm -hmm. Ron Paul ran in the 2012 and 2008 election, I believe, ran twice. And then Rand Paul, his son, which is the congressman or the... He's congressman from, from Kentucky or something from like Kentucky that. From Kentucky or yeah. something like that. And, um, you know, we should actually probably have these facts out. We should, we should know where Rand Paul is running from. I know where he's running from. He's Kentucky? From, can, he's a senator from Kentucky. For sure? For sure. Okay, well, David knows this one. Then. And, if, and, if, and if you think I'm wrong out there, call in, get in the chat. I want to hear from you. But uh, So Rand Paul's running. He's running in a lot of good uh, you know, policies. He's talking about too many lobbying, you know, too many lobbyists going on mm -hmm. in, the corporate, or in the Congress world. And people are lobbying for corporations and the fascist state, corporations and state coming together. Yep. He's really against that. He's also, you know, going for the Second Amendment. Everyone has a right to bear arms. Yep. And uh, what else is he running on? Um, he's trying to say he's like, well, wants to bring, you know, prosperity back to America. Prosperity back to America. So that that right there shows you that there's good in the they. And also, he's running on no no more of these lifelong congressmen anymore. He's going to give Congress terms. You know, just like the These president career, has. Career politicians. Yeah, career politicians. Thank, thank God, finally someone's doing it. Right? I know, right? Like, these guys are sitting in there like, how long has, what, McCain been in there? I mean, or, the, what uh, was the most guy that, uh, Daniel Tunney, the guy from Hawaii, the senator from Hawaii, how long was he in the, 
in the Senate for over 50 years or something like that? I don't know what the exact number is. We're looking it up right now. If you know, let us know. Is it Tunney or is it Tunney? Tunney. Daniel Tunney or something like that. Congressman from Daniel Hawaii. Daniel Tunney. Let's see here. Congressman. I don't know, but he was in there for a long time. I yeah. Guess. He was in there until he died. These people just stay in there. And like, And how come people haven't realized yet that why are these people just staying in there? I thought these people had term limits and it was just a cycle in and out. Yeah, you know, that's almost like the elite sitting within Congress. Those people who've been in there for their whole life. Yeah, they're they're the people that probably have the most power. And those are the people that go in there with like no money, and leave with like multi mills, or leave with uh, you know deals to go sign on with a corporation. Yeah, you know, like uh, like right now you have you have people working within the United States President's cabinet mm -hmm. that have actually came from banks, as in Merrill Lynch, J.P. Morgan, yeah. Bear Stearns. And you have people that are going in there pushing policies through the government now that are helping their fellow brothers back out back in the corporate world. I mean, here's a big example for all the people who live in Chicagoland. Rahm Emanuel. Now, everybody remembers him. He was Obama's White House chief of staff for the first, I don't know how many years he was in there. And look what happened to him. As soon as he left, boom, right in the mayor of Chicago. Like, it just, he just walked right in. Yep. And then he just had that election. He just walked right back into it again. Yep. So there it is, the revolving door. And Obama was from Chicago, so... Yeah. Uh, oh, tell me that's not a little crooked yeah, right weird. there. weird. I'm going to help my boys out back in the city. Yeah. Not and, to mention one of, the, one of the worst off cities right now. Supposedly we're looking at, like, another sort of Detroit going on in Chicago. Yeah. Now public school systems running out of money. That thing is... So, I think the public school system in Chicago is insolvent, but... That's getting off topic about they, but that's true. That's what they're doing. That's it, what they're doing. They're, they're, they're just they're crumbling it from the inside out. Yeah. You know, they're, they're taking money. They're moving around, making risky investments with it, trying to figure out, you know, different ways to allocate their money and everything in different sectors. True. And then sooner or later, the bill comes to pay. And nobody's got the money anymore. Oh, you got the money? You got the money? No, nobody's got the money anymore. Well, guess what? Let's file for bankruptcy. Yeah, let's put it back on the taxpayer. Yeah, let's put it on the taxpayer because that's what's going to happen, I guess, in Chicago if we don't figure this out. I think it's in August that we have to figure this out. If the Chicago public school system falls into bankruptcy, federal government steps in, starts paying the teachers, and then starts pretty much wiping out all the extra money that they're spending, dropping teacher salaries, dropping the education level. And then you start coming into more of those common core... Like some, yeah. like mathematics, Common Core. I looked at that. I'm like, what is this? I did. I looked at that too. Some Common Core math. Yeah. I don't even know how that is math. Yeah. At all. It's like, wait, are we trying to figure out something else than two plus two? Because I'm pretty sure it's just four. Yeah, but to these people, two plus two equals five. Yes, it does. It is whatever they say it is. Yes. So you better sit down, shut up, and just listen to your teacher, and don't second guess anything. That goes back to what we were talking about: taking a leap of faith in these schools, and they ain't doing it. So. So, our first question that we have here is, what do they want? What do they want? And what do they want is, you know, I think what they want is very prevalent in something called Agenda 21. Yes. And, uh, you know, my co-host over here knows a lot about Agenda 21, actually. I wouldn't say I'm the, you know, scholar of Agenda 21, but I know enough where I can tell people, I can direct people in a location to go look at Agenda 21. And how I know about Agenda 21 is I've looked at a book. I didn't read the whole thing, but I did read a good little chunk of it. It's called Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. And in that book, she basically explains what they're doing in society today to consolidate power more and more toward a central form. And you can see it happening in these cities today. I mean, I saw, I follow a guy on YouTube called Grindall61. And he's exposing Agenda 21 in his community in Southern California. What's going on over there? He's showing that they're, everybody knows about the whole California water drought situation and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And he got people on tape saying that they are going to have water rationing. They're going to ration out water for everybody. Everybody gets a certain amount of water that they can only have. You can only have a certain amount. Because, you know, water's, water costs money on this earth now, even the bottled water. So you only get a certain amount of water. And if you need any more water, like if you want to water your lawn or if you spend too long in the shower, you wash too many clothes, if your water bill is maybe over a certain percentage, you're going to pay more now. Oh, really? And, and not just more than you would normally pay. You're going to pay more. 
So it's going to be like skyrocketed and sort of it's inflation. On it's the yeah, exactly. It's going to be. It's just control. That's all Agenda of Twenty One is, is. Is is control. It wants to take you off your land, especially rural areas. It wants to get you off the land. It wants to get you into the cities, high density, and stuff like that. Rationing of food. They're very compacted. Everyone kind of all in the same to, area. Yeah, in these mega controlled cities where you're always on camera. Where you're never, where you can never really leave mm -hmm. because you're paying your rent in the city. It's so high you can never really leave, and that's what they want. I mean, it's it's all about the control. I mean, all it is is about taking taking the masses, putting them into sort of consumer zombie like state. Yep. And just kind of pushing in more products, more laws, more police on the streets. True. I mean, the police state and the military industrial complex is turning huge these days. You even saw what what uh, what's that guy's name? Eisenhower, mm -hmm. what he said about the military industrial complex. Look it up. Go on YouTube right now. Type in Eisenhower speech, military industrial complex, and listen to it. Very, you know what? Maybe we should pull it up and play it for everybody. I think we should. I think next segment, you know, we're going to pull it up and play it for everyone because I need to prove to these people that, that these people have been saying that, this. That they are, are saying this. And they is Eisenhower, but, but he did say it, so he would probably be sitting on the good side of things. Just like there is a power struggle up at the top. And uh, so Eisenhower speaks out the truth, John F. Kennedy spoke out the truth, but supposedly after that, they couldn't have a president that they couldn't control anymore. Yeah. Talk about control, they couldn't have, you know, after John F. Kennedy started speaking out, trying to bring in Federal Reserve, or not Federal Reserve notes, the U.S. currency notes actually, yeah. back again, backed by gold. Um, greenbacks, Abraham Lincoln used to call them, I don't know what they were calling them back in John F. Kennedy's day, but they started putting $5 bills back in circulation that were actually backed by the U.S. Treasury, Re not... Real money. Real money, not, not the Federal money. Reserve. Yeah, not the fiat currency that the Federal Reserve uh, pretty much pushes out on us yeah. and makes us in control of. Because, you, you I mean, know, we're, we're going to cover that today, too. We're going to cover the whole Federal Reserve and the they behind that because that's big. That is, that is huge. I mean, you have people controlling your money, and like we said, they control the nation then. They not care who makes the laws then. Yeah. Because they're always above them then, and that's what they think. They think that, okay, well, we're in control. We're controlling the money. So without money, what are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's why if they push the financial crisis on us, what would happen? I mean, where would we be? We'd be probably in civil unrest. We'd be going, you know, chaos in the streets. There'd yeah. be riots. There'd be everything happening if the money system went down. I want everybody to look, look in a big spectrum on where society is today. You can see it almost starting to happen. The police are getting tanks. The police are getting military gear. The... The dollar is slowly falling and falling and falling. They're bringing in more illegal immigrants and illegal immigrants to vote for these people. Bigger government. For more, for more, for more bigger government. They're coming after the guns slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. Where's it all going? Yeah, why what, are they doing all this? Why are they doing all this? That's the question. Why, why is this, you know, tapping your phones, tapping your internet? Why is the net neutrality happening? Where do, why are all these things kind of lining up in a certain alignment that's like, are we set for bad things that start happening or... I mean, what do you think? I mean, do you think? I think, I think it's going to happen. I don't want to be a fear monger about it, but I want, I don't want anybody to be worried. I'm technically not, I don't consider myself worried about it, but it is there and I do address it. So if anything were to happen, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, it's happening. Yeah, I can be like, okay, I kind of saw it kind of coming, you know, I kind of saw it coming down, saw the writing on the wall. And we can act accordingly. And then one thing is, is you know, like we said, don't be worried, always be aware, is we don't want any of these things to happen. Absolutely not. We, we're always hoping for the best, and we always want the best outcome, peace on earth. Yeah. But after this, we're going to get into, you know, what more they want, you know, who they are, what their master plan is, and is there any evidence behind it. But we'll be with you right back after these messages. 23 minutes past the hour here with Inform Nation. Here we are today talking about they, talking about, you know, the, the elitists of the world who control us through advertisements, money, banking. The power force. The power force behind the country right now, behind the world, behind any big, you know, richer country. Yeah. You know, first world countries, a lot of them have a lot of elitists in there. I would I say. I wouldn't have to say the third world countries really, really have too much of this going on. I mean, they have, it's just like anything with all, with all cultures and humans, they stratify themselves. There's like the control system, even in a third world country, be it a dictatorship or any type of other thing, they have their own type of control system. There's the people in control and the people not in control. Mm -hmm. 
And so, um, it's just on what kind of scale is it going? Like America is a huge scale. Yeah. And Europe, huge scale. Third world country, maybe a little smaller, mm -hmm. but still, same thing. And the biggest thing to scare us is what we're going to play a clip of is the military industrial complex. Big thing for people to understand. Yes, the military industrial complex, I mean, as everybody probably knows, I mean, the military in the United States is about, I think it's three times as big as or two times as big as the next military? Everybody sees those commercials and stuff for you know, the military, and they're always just like, a global force for good, a world power. I'm like, America's the world, the world police now? Yeah. Well, under the UN? Yeah, right? It's, it's like the UN controls the United States military partially, so. I would say they do. I mean, the United States works very closely with them, so. We've been signed on to the UN ever since 1940, what, something? Yeah. Something like that. But here we are. We're going to play a little clip right now, and uh, it's little Dwight D. Eisenhower making a little speech about the military industrial complex. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good evening, my fellow Americans. We now stand ten years past the midpoint of a century that has witnessed four major wars among great nations. Until the latest of our world conflicts, the United States had no armaments industry. American makers of plowshares could with time, and as required, make swords as well. But we can no longer risk emergency improvisation of national defense. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Added to this, three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. Now this conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. Our toil, resources, and livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals, so that security and liberty may prosper together. That was, uh, that was intense. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he called it out. He said it straight up. Yes. That the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. And that was in 19 what? What year was that? Dude, uh, let's see here. Uh, night, January 17th, 1961. Wow. That was actually his exit speech. That was his That exit was his speech. farewell address to presidency. So if you can think about right when you go out, if you want to say like something, something. You got to say it. It might as well be the best time to say it. And, you know, the weird thing is, too, is that uh, this president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, was right before John F. Kennedy. Yeah. As well, too. And he made that speech. He and, he, been, and he knew the military. He was a Yeah, he was a general. Multi-star general. Yeah, for World War II. Too. I mean, this is a guy that was in the military-industrial complex. complex. I mean, he was the high-ranking general for the military. And he's the guy speaking out against it. Yeah, he saw where it was going. Yeah, I mean, it's like, okay, well, he saw it, like, I, you know, right in front of him. And it's like, okay, well, we need to do something about it. So I need to go tell the public and inform people. And that's why I think John F. Kennedy made the speech, you know, maybe as a successor, being Dwight D. Eisenhower, mm -hmm. saying, hey, we need to inform the public more. And that's where this starts coming down to. We need to inform the public on what's going on. We need to have real journalism, yeah. real articles out there, real news. Because the news is meant to keep us informed about what's going on in government. Yeah. And I brought, I brought up a, a definition of the military-industrial complex for many people who don't understand. 
The Military Industrial Complex, or, or Military Industrial Congressional Complex, comprises the policy and monetary relationships which exist between legislators, national armed forces, and the arms industry that supports them. So it's basically like a revolving door. So it's like America's, think about it, America has always been at war. Mm -hmm. Ever since some World War II, look at it. We went from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and then we were in what, Kosovo and all those uh, places over there. No, it was it was World, and then Gulf War One, right? Yeah. Vietnam, Gulf War One, uh, then the whole Kosovo type thing over there, and then it was uh, uh, the whole Gulf War Two. Where we, we have, are now. Then we have some going on in the jungles too, in a little bit, like a little military coup operation going on as well. Yeah, all that stuff in like Panama and all yeah. that other stuff that they're running down there. Yeah. Just a bunch of CIA ops. So it's not even like really war, but we're causing war all you the wanna, time. We're, we're pissing people off does, at least all the time. Does anybody want to know a big thing about they? We're going to talk about George Herbert Walker Bush, the first one. That oh, guy yeah. was Skull and Bones member. Or what about their dad? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, their dad, Prescott Bush? Yeah. You mean he was involved with funding the Nazis? Yeah. And involved in funding the Bolshevik Revolution yep. before that? They sat on both sides of the fence back then. Oh, yeah. We got we got proof of that about that here today. We're going to be talking about that. We have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Prescott Bush actually was funding the Nazis. Yep. You know, allegedly, as it says in some of these books, or is it is it fact? I mean, is it fact that Prescott Bush was funding Nazis? I believe it is almost. I believe it is. I mean, we'll, we'll say it's supposedly, but we're pretty sure it's a fact over you here. Can, I mean, we've done, you've done our research on it. You can go look it up online. If you disagree with us, go look it up. Find out where it is that, you, that, that we're wrong mm -hmm. and bring it to us and tell us. Yeah, if it's wrong, I mean, if we're telling you anything, it's but, wrong. But if we're right, then please then open do, your eyes to do it. something with the information yeah open your eyes to you know the fact of even uh, you know people sat on both sides of the fence even from the Rothschilds family oh yeah you know they they uh, in the, what's the last napoleon war oh that was a uh, napoleonic war yeah when was Napole that, like 1812 or something like that we're looking we're looking it up but what ended up happening was the Rothschilds funded both sides of that war and when the war came to an end Actually, they started pulling their money out of which, which I can't think of which country it was on oh, top of my head. It was the Bank of England. Bank of England, and then they started to crumble, and then the Rothschilds came in right after that because they started selling everything off and bought everything, and but they really won the war. I'm going to say 1815 because that was the end of the Napoleonic War. So that you know, everyone in England thought that they lost the war, but really they won it. But you know, the Rothschilds got there first, sold off everything. Everyone was in pretty much chaos, saying, "Oh my God, we need to hold on to everything that we can." taking everything out of the banks, drop the prices of everything. Then the Rothschilds come in, swoop in, buy everything back up again. Because and they, then guess what? They won the war. Because they and knew. everything really wasn't exactly. that bad after all. Exactly. So they just conned everyone into selling off all their, all their shares of in financial anything. Mm -hmm. They just bought it all up. For pennies on the dollar. Yep. I mean, that's almost what happened back in the, the Great Depression when they consolidated a lot more power, too. I mean, when these economic booms and bubbles happen, the one thing that we have to look out for is who's in power and who's making the money off of this yes because there's always somebody that's going to make the money off these deals out there you know the Great Depression when JP Morgan made this scare in the market that banks were going you know broke mm -hmm. and everyone made a run on the banks and then what happened the stock market crashed and then what happened JP Morgan and his all his buddies came in consolidated the market bought up everything and then now guess what now where we are today they own more I mean, probably own like half the world I know I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, you want to talk about the 1% or the 0.01% that controls 99% of the money? Yeah, or it's not even 1%. If you really want to look at full-blown elitists that are at the very top, it's less than a percentage. Yeah, I think it's 0.01 of a percent. Yeah. That's a small amount of people making big, big decisions in this world. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they meet up. I mean, if you want to talk about who they are, they meet. They have the Bilderberg groups. Yes. They have the Trilateral, uh, the U trilateral, trilateral commission. commission. The Council on Foreign Relations. Yeah. They, have the, they go out to Bohemian Grove, Grove. over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have all these little groups that they go, and they go meet out of the public's eye. The media doesn't cover it. And they go out there, and they sit in there for about a week or two, and talk about political strategies and money for the world's currency, yep. for the world's society, and everything that goes on with that. And thinking about these unelected people, we're talking about America here, we've allowed unelected, just like people who have money, the, the string pullers, these movers and shakers up top, unelected to just allow them to just make policy 
for the world. Yeah. They screwed up. And they're involved heavily in the UN on what they're doing. Oh, a lot of the UN members aren't elected. Yeah, they're just like, oh, we like this person to be in the UN, so let's put him in there. Yeah. Like, wait, so these people are making policy over me? Over my government? Over my government? And I'm not even allowed to even know who they are? How many people actually out there right now know of anybody in the UN? That's, that's allowing, that making policy for America. I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> and I study this Leonardo stuff. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe if that's who's in the UN, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. Maybe if you won an Oscar. But, uh, you know, I don't know about Leonardo DiCaprio. I like his films. Yeah. I like, I like Leonardo wait, films. Wait. He makes some of the most mind-bending films. Wait, he's in the UN? Yeah, he, he, he's, he's involved in, in some He's UN in the UN stuff. with environmental things. I, at least he made a speech in the UN, I can say that much. Oh, my God. I don't know if he's involved in the actual, like, you know, everything that goes on. Like, <laughs> oh, Leonardo, what do you think about this? Well, you know, I have some uh, acting experience, and uh, I know we could really pull the wool over these people's eyes if we didn't know. Yeah. But, um, would, no, he's I'd in there for, like, environment. Yeah, he's in there for environmental <laughs> reasons. And uh, he's, I guess, a big supporter of cleaning up the oceans and everything, which... You know, I don't, I don't know too much on Leonardo, but I have to say, like, if that's really what he's out for, that's a good cause. Yeah. I mean, if we do need to clean up the oceans and everything. I just hope he's not involved in a lot of con stuff about it. Because, you know, this whole environmental group. There's the good side. I'm, I'm not going to say I support a lot of environmentalism. There's the good side. But people need to be aware that they could be, that there's a lot of things that they could be using against in, in us the, in the through the environmental movement against us like i mean like, I. The, e. like the carbon a, agenda 21 yeah like the, the carbon movement they want to start cutting down on your carbon or they want to tax you on how much carbon you're emitting yeah i mean what like i emit carbon right now like i'm speaking into the mic and there's just carbon coming out of my mouth are they going to soon be like well if you breathe too much you're going to have to pay me five dollars a week to breathe yeah and it's uh, like, oh, that's great. Like, or if you use too much water, then you're going to have to pay for it. I thought water was just free on this planet. Yeah. For everybody. Water is here. Water's been here before us. It'll be here after us. Yeah, the, thing is, the thing is, though, I mean, if you think about it, is we got 7.5 billion people on this planet, and there's only 1% of the Earth's water supply is actually drinkable. But what's, what's that about, then? I mean, if you, if you think about it that way, can we be giving water to everybody? I mean, if you think about it on that standpoint, can we? Should we constrict the drinkable water? I mean, what do you think? I mean, do you think we should put, you know, That's almost policies on how much water? I mean, hmm. what if we run out? But then again, sure. I have the idea, can we just turn? Like, they say, okay, 1% is only drinkable. But don't we have the modern mechanics to go take seawater and turn it into regular water? They do. Yeah. And they've had it for years. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they do it on cruise ships. They have big facilities on cruise ships that turn, take the salt out, purify the water, and put it into drinking water. Yeah. I mean, why are you saying only 1% of the water is drinkable, too? I mean, that doesn't make sense either. It's like, yeah, you can say that because straight out, you can, like, like straight, straight out, out the gate of the you, world, you could drink 1% of the, the world's water. Yeah. But see, they always talk about the primary water cycle, which is just like the water cycle from, or is it the primary or secondary? There's two water cycles. They're only talking about the water that comes from the sky. That's the only water they ever talk about. They don't talk about the water that comes from the ground. Mm -hmm. The groundwater. They're like, oh, there's a drought. It's not raining. So therefore, the, the water's going down. Mm -hmm. But who knows how many what these big aquifers and giant reservoirs are in the, in the ground that Nestle is pumping out. Oh, yeah. That, like, For skyrocket profits. Yeah. Like, they, they, allow, they make you turn off your water, but... But Nestle they get to pump and, it out for free. Big corporations can just pump out the water for free. They pump out for free too. Like if you watch, uh, what is that water? The Great Culling. Mm -hmm. The Great Culling. There you go. You want to look up the documentary? Look up the Great Culling. They talk about how like Nestle and everything go to like these small towns that have natural springs there and natural aquifers and go pump out the water for free and go sell it to you. Then they go bring these huge trucks there. They pull up next to like a pump in the ground. They hook up the truck to it and they pump the water out into the truck. Go bring it to their factory. Maybe do some carbon filter or whatever the yeah, hell they do, whatever. because really it's just the same as your drinking water. And they put it into a water bottle, smack a label on it, and charge you a buck for it. Or if you're at a like a you know football or baseball game, they'll charge you five bucks for it. Mm -hmm. And you know we always thought it'd be a great idea to get in the dollar water business. That's a great business out there. Everybody out there willing to make a anyone good in your town go into dollar water business. Yes, because if you ever go to like these huge events or anything. Just bring your own waters and sell them for a buck. You'll make a boatload. Oh yeah, they're selling those bottles of water out there. Like the, 
at the carnival or something like that for three dollars. Yeah, go set up a booth and just offer water. <laughs> yeah. There you offer, go. Yeah. Oh, I do. Here's a big. I like this picture that Barry Kroger put out on there. It's a big pyramid of elitists that right. has exactly what's going on. Up at the top, you got yeah, royal right. families. You got the Queen of England, that witch. Underneath, you have a council or committee of crown, 300. Crown of the Council of 13. Mm -hmm. Crown Council of 13. What's up with the 13? That goes. I mean, I mean that, that goes in the satanic rituals. Goes, and, and, like, that goes whole into the whole mystery religion side. Yes, yeah, so and yeah. everything. That's a big thing about they. We didn't talk about that yet. Yeah, we didn't talk about actually how they might not worship uh, the same God that uh, we worship. Or, yeah. I mean, even if, if we worship a God, or just might. Maybe they don't worship the same morals, we'll say that. Exactly. The same morals, because everyone's got their own beliefs, but they just might not follow the same moral structure as most of mankind does. Mm -hmm. You know, they look out for your brothers, you know, don't steal, don't shun anybody. Common You morals. know, forgive, you know, don't kill. But these people are killing, and if, they, and if they're not killing directly, they're killing indirectly. Yeah, because... They're putting the GMOs in your food, they're putting the, you know, the mercury in your vaccines, they're, they're putting, putting the sodium, sodium fluoride in, in your water. water. Yeah. So, I mean, this is what they are doing, and they must have some sort of sense about what it actually does. Either it's directly or it's indirectly. Somehow, they're killing off people. Because to these people, the end justifies the means. Yeah. And they don't care what, what happens to, in order to get to where they're going. They need to get to where mm -hmm. they're going. Here, big example. They want gun control here in America, and everybody knows it. Gun control, big thing. What are they? They don't care if they shoot up a school or shoot up a shopping mall or shoot up anywhere. It it doesn't matter if people die because they want gun control. Mm -hmm. If those people dying will give them more control of not people having guns, they'll do it, and hey, they don't care. Hey David, I know you got a book sitting over here to your right. Which it's which called uh, "Behold a Pale Horse" by Bill by William Cooper, aka Bill Cooper. Yes. And I believe uh, you were telling me something on the car ride over here. That this book was written in 1991. Yes. And if anyone can remember, uh, you know, the first big school shooting was Columbine. What was it, like 1995 or it's something 1995 like that? It's 1995 or 1996 or something like that. And uh, this book was written in 1991, and so you had to figure that he put a bunch of collection of information together before 1991 in order to publish this book. And in this book, uh, David was telling me that he even called out the facts that there are going to be school shootings in order to push more gun control on the people. And that's scary to think that they're actually going to start committing false flags against their own citizens to push gun control. And I even believe you were telling me before too that even Rob Emanuel said when there's crisis it's the best time to push you know policy through because it's a time when you know the population is susceptible to saying oh the government's here to save me and keep me a lot more you know we should play protected. That, we should play that quick clip. I think it's only a few, few seconds or only a minute long. It's basically Rob Emanuel telling you that that they will use crisis it to exas they will exacerbate a crisis in order to gain political control from it so the end justifies the means for these people are like oh look something happened over here we're going to use it to use our own agenda big example that michael brown thing and that ferguson that happened everybody remembers that Everybody remembers that, oh, that, that happened, oh, a white person shot a black person. Hey, David, is this, uh, is this it right here? Rahm Emanuel on the Opportunities of Crisis by Wall Street Journal. Yes. This is who this is by. I mean, that's, if you want a credible source, the Wall Street Journal is a credible source uh, in court, uh, as opposed to, you know, like Fox News and all those other guys. It's as I, credible I as mainstream it, gets. Yes. Yeah, I would say... Definitely, if you want a big mainstream, you want it in your face that it's happening, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, it's happening. All right, here we go. Here's a little clip. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. I think America as a whole in 1973 and 1974, and not just my view, but obviously the administration, missed the opportunity to deal with the energy crisis that was before us. For a long time, our entire energy policy came down to cheap oil. This is an opportunity, what used to be long-term problems, be they in the healthcare area, energy area, education area, fiscal area, tax area, regulatory reform area, things that we had postponed for too long that were long-term are now immediate and must be dealt with. And this crisis provides the opportunity for us, as I would say, 
the opportunity to do things that you could not do before. The good news, I suppose, if you want to see a silver lining, is the problems are big enough that they lend themselves to ideas from both parties for the solution. That is also, I mean, it's, there's not a, we didn't just do the meeting with Senator McCain and Senator Lindsay. The president did not elect did not have that meeting just for optics. We covered very serious issues as it relates to spending reforms on government approach. He All right, I'm going to turn this clip off of, here. He just uh, keeps on uh, going on and on. But you got the picture. I mean, you got the picture that they're sitting there thinking about, well, when a crisis happens, we have great opportunities. I mean, if, he's talking about the energy crisis in here and, you know, social reform and everything like that. But the fact of the matter is, is, is these people in power know that when crisis happens, the population gets scared into voting in or accepting certain laws or certain policies that were yet before kind of, you know, shunned on. Mm -hmm. Saying, oh, you know, we don't want, you know, pri we want our privacy. Well, guess what? There's terrorists and everything, and they're using the Internet to do it, so we're going to need to search your computers, too, just in case. But don't worry, you're not a terrorist, so we don't need your stuff, but they're just compiling it over in Utah now. What is that whole thing? It's, it's a big, encompassing thing. It's called the Hegelian dialectic, which in, in layman's terms is... Problem, reaction, solution. So when we come back, we're going to talk about more about problem, reaction, solution. We're going to talk more about they. What are they doing? What do they want? What are they here for? And what you can do to stop them. I don't Joe, like they. Neither do I. <laughs> but let's do something about it. Back in a few. Back at you with Inform Nation Radio here. Here we are talking about who they are. They. And, uh, you know, we were talking, I told David to look in the Behold of a Pale Horse book here. And, and uh, he just it. found it right before the last uh, segment we had right there. So why don't you uh, read the little paragraph here for everyone. Here you go. Here's verification, everyone, that the government is involved with, in an inside way, coming after the Second Amendment. Here we go. This is from Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. Chap written in 1991. Written, published in 1991. This is from Chapter 12, The Secret Government. And on page 225, it's the first full paragraph on the paper. Here we go. The government encouraged the manufacture and importation of military firearms for the criminals to use. This is intended to foster a feeling of insecurity, which would lead the American people to voluntarily disarm themselves by passing laws against firearms. Using drugs and hypnosis on mental patients in a process called Orion, the CIA in inculcated the desire in these people to open fire on schoolyards and thus inflame the anti-gun lobby. This plan is well underway and so far is working perfectly. The middle class is begging the government to do away with the Second Amendment. And that's the end of that. That's, that's intense. That's, you know, what, five years before all this started happening? Yeah, that's like few, five years before Columbine. Yeah, now it's starting to, you know, pretty much take control. Yeah, this, everybody, every shooting that ever happens, everybody instantly is ban the guns, ban the guns, ban the guns. When people don't understand that criminals are going to get guns no matter what, that's why they're criminals. Criminals use guns. I mean, if you're a criminal, why wouldn't you have a gun, right? Because there's other criminals with guns out there who might be doing criminal things towards you. So I know uh, he was referring to uh, a CIA operation called Orion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to put another name to that. It's pretty much the CIA's mind control program, mm -hmm. correct? I mean, it's, it's called Project MK Ultra. You could search it anywhere on the Internet. Wikipedia's got a nice little uh, a thing on it here, even with pictures of declassified uh, documents from MK Ultra. And pretty much when it became uh, prevalent, it started in the 1950s, uh, went on into the 70s. I believe uh, the book, um, what's that one book, uh, Not to Kill a Mockingbird, um, with the guy in the insane asylum. You know who I'm talking about, right? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Yeah, house. yeah, that was about MK yeah, Ultra's, Ultra. you know, mind control program and what they were doing to people inside mental facilities. Yeah. And, I mean, they were literally, you know, drugging people, you know, depriving them of certain things in order to get a certain... Trauma-based mind control. Yeah, trauma-based mind control. And uh, the weird thing, and we talked about how the Nazis were funded by Prescott Bush and everything's kind of tied together with, uh, you know, bringing two sides, you know, funding both sides so you never lose a war, um, at least financially, uh, that people might lose it, but the financial structure behind it might not be gone, or at least the people who operated both sides uh, didn't fall. But what ended up happening was... Um, you know, MK Ultra started in the 1950s, in the early 1950s. You could say about, you know, it was officially sanctioned in 1953. 
Um, but it started in the early 1950s. And the weird thing about that is, what's that after? World War II. World War II. And, and then, what happened after World War II? I believe we brought Nazis over here that used to work, uh, you know, with the whole regime over there. And we brought them over here for our own tests. And then what's that called? Operation Paperclip. Paper Clip. Here Look we go. it up. Here we go. Operation Paperclip. Uh, it was 19... Oh, wow. Originally Operation Forecast, Overcast was from 1949 to 1990. Uh, wow. It was here, I'll read a, a little snippet here, a program in which 1,500 German scientists, technicians, engineers from, German Nazi, from, Germany, from Nazi Germany and other foreign countries were brought to the United States for employment in the aftermath of World War II. So that's weird. So basically what the Nazis were doing with their whole secret projects and everything like that, America, who was probably involved in the Nazi secret projects at the time, said, hey, you know what, even though the Nazis kind of fell on the outside, on the front, in the background, we all know what's going on back here, so you're just going to come over here and work for us, and mm -hmm. we're just going to continue on the Nazis. Like, like I heard a quote or something that said that the Nazis never fell, they just moved to move to, move to America, move to the Soviet Union, yeah. move to other places in Europe, that whole po Operation Paperclip. I mean, the Nazi mentality is still very alive today. I mean, it's disgusting, but it's still very alive today. Yeah. I mean, and then you think about, you know, everything going on in the world, what these people maybe, you know, brought upon us in the world. I mean, they brought us the, you know, part of them, some of them, uh, let's see here, the 104 of them came over here for rocket scientists and aerospace, it says here. Oh, look what happened after that. The whole NASA project yeah, got NASA started oh. after that. Oh, weird. We're connecting dots here, people. That's, you know, that's the main thing of what, you know, information wants to bring you, is connecting some dots between uh, things. You know, we were talking about the MKUltra, well, that kind of weirdly enough fell into Operation Paperclip, and, you know, a bunch of these different operations that aren't in the public eye because they're trying to keep them away from us. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very sad that they do this because, you know, like John F. Kennedy and Eisenhower said, hey, we need to inform the public. Mm -hmm. And if they're not informed, they're not going to make the right decisions. And where we're headed right now is we're not making right decisions. It's because people aren't informed. No, they're not. And, you know, a lot of these, you know, maybe you could say secret societies are doing this to us, or, you know, the Illuminati, some people say. Yeah. Some people say Freemasonry. Some people say the, what is it, the Jesuits? or the, not the, Yeah, the Jesuits. They're another secret society involved mm -hmm. in everything. I mean, as I see it is, you know, I think maybe some of these societies are out for good, and then, but I think maybe inside of them, like we said before, there's the struggle for power. Yeah. I mean, you know, some people might think that it's bad, and some people might think it's good, and it's all, it's all subjective, I guess you could say, if it is good or if it is bad. But I just never think killing people is ever a good thing. No, not at all. I mean, it, it go, it, at the same time, you got, it's, it's not just one group out there. It's not just the Illuminati. It's not just Freemasonry. It's not just the banks. It's not just the Vatican, or people say the, the Jews control the press or the money. It's not They just, do control Hollywood, they though. Do, I mean, they do control a lot. There's a lot of wealthy Jews. There's a lot of people involved in a lot of different things out there. But in order, you, in order to understand what's going on and what they are doing, you can't pinpoint it on one specific group because there's many groups all competing for the exact same goal. The Council on Foreign Relations wants world government. The UN wants world government. The Vatican wants world government. Communist International wants world government. They're all competing for the same thing, which is, I'm going to say it, in the end game, what it all comes down to is control. And what they want is a world, one world, totalitarian, socialist government. And here in America, we are opposed to socialism here. Ever since the founding of America, it's always been opposed to socialism. Through the years, socialists have crept into different sp spots and places in this country and in wealthy and in very powerful positions and ex have exerted their influence over us. You know, and they use a lot of, here we go, I'm looking at uh, one of my books that I have here that I brought with me to the station today, is Secret Societies. And, I mean, if you want to see what a lot of them do, look in their symbolism. Yes. I mean, I'm looking at, I'm going to show David this over here, too, but, I'm, you know, I'm looking at even you talking about, like, the whole medical sign. Yeah, the caduceus. Uh, yeah, it's, the, you know, the two serpents coming up from the bottom. Of that staff with of the, the wings staff, on it. Yeah. Everybody's seen it. It's on, like, and the it's, back of you know, ambulances. Healing, healing and knowledge. Let's see, what the weird thing about that is, is the knowledge fact is the original sin brings you back to Adam and Eve. 
the serpent asks uh, Eve if she wants to take the apple. She eats the apple, brings it back to Adam. It tells him to eat the apple. And then you're not, now you got knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I don't. Why do they do this? I mean, why why do they put these things? I mean, the pyramid in the back of the all-seeing eye on the dollar bill. On the dollar bill. Why do they do that? I mean, why do they put all these things in front of us? And as you can tell, it's becoming more and more prevalent as time's coming on that they're in control. Yeah. And I think it's almost like saying, hey, we are in control, and we don't care if you know we're in control anymore. It's like a revelation because there's the nothing. Now. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. And I know after this segment, I'll bring another book in here that I actually left in my car, but weirdly enough, the Lego movie for kids is actually filled Filled with symbolism and underlining stories to it. Yeah. Talking about how Mr. President Businessman, which yeah. was Will Ferrell I mean, in I it. like how the big guy up top is called President Business. Yeah. If that's not fascism, I don't know what is. Yeah, President Business is up there saying, okay, you have to read his manual every day in order to be a good Bricksburg citizen. And you, and then the manual tells you what to do yep. all day long. You're not allowed to do it for yourself. Nope. You only can do what the manual does. Yep. And what are the people that, and there's the big symbolism, what are the people that help break out of the Lego movie trance? What are they called? They're called the Master Builders. The Master Builders. Master Builders. If anybody understands any type of symbolism or symbology or terminology used by these people, Master Builders, big, right there. Oh, yeah, I mean, and then they, what does he do in the movie? He puts them in a little chamber, like a little cell, and hooks their brains up to, like, a... This ultimate master building contraption that takes all the master builder's thoughts, puts them together for Mr. President Businessman to kind of uh, manipulate and control and control the people through all these master builders that he's accumulated throughout time. And his major plan is to wreak havoc on society and release the craggle on everyone, which craggles the super glue. And he wants to <laughs> super glue all the Lego wonder, people what, to the ground. But yeah. But after this, uh, I'm going to go run out to my car. I'm going to grab the book, show you a little bit more. I left another couple notes in my cards and another book as well, too. But we'll be back right after this in a few minutes here. So we'll see you back. Here we are, back at you with Inform Nation. Five minutes past the hour worldwide. Welcome back. And here we are. Uh, yeah, I wanted to go run out to my car and actually... Uh, I know everyone's going to be like, wow, this guy bought the Lego book? Like, how old is this guy? If like, you've seen the Lego movie out there, if you've seen the Lego movie with an open mind and an open eye, then you'll be able to understand some of the Here we stuff go, the Lego about. movie, The Essential Guide. Here we go. It looks like a, it's a kid's book. It literally is a kid's book here. But what I wanted to say is Emmett in the movie is, is a normal worker, is a construction worker. But everyone in the movie has this little manual that they live their lives by. And, uh, and those of you, those of you that have played Legos in the past, know that all the Legos come with a little instruction manual yeah. on how to do it, and this is basically what it is. Yeah, no, no. So this is what's called instructions for life. Emmett always follows the steps in his instructions manual, which was written by President Business. It tells him how to be a model Bricksburg citizen. Ooh. Then it goes on to showing like everything that Emmett does, all in the construction or all in the manual here. And then here you go, we got Pre Lord Business. Since uh, we're talking about they. Mr. President Businessman, this is pretty much considered they in the movie. And actually his little, uh, his little platform that he owns, Octane, looks like the Pepsi. Yeah, it looks like the, the Pepsi logo. looks like the Pepsi logo, but it's green and red. Uh, but President Business, in exchange for free tacos and his love, all President Business asks for is for his minifigure citizens is that they follow his instructions very carefully. So everything in Bricksburg is just perfect. Otherwise, they will be put to sleep. That's what it says in here. It says in the kids' book. Otherwise, they will be put to sleep. Like this is a book. Like I'm serious. Like if you ever check out the podcast on video, like I'm holding like this book up. This is a kids' book, and they're actually they're saying that and right here. Look at the picture yeah. of President Business. Yeah, All of you on President there. Business. I'm gonna hold this up to the camera over here for a second. Here, Alex, take control. I'm gonna put this on the camera. Okay, so David's putting this up to the camera, but what it is, it's President Business, and he puts on like his Mr. President Business helmet. I don't know what it is, but it's like the Baphomet, which Baphomet's a satanic, you know, the Satan symbol. It's the goat with the horns that stick out, and it's it's ridiculous. I mean, here we go, here we go. We're uh, we got Todd in here taking a picture of this, and this is a kid's book. I had my little cousin today actually come into my room. He's like, oh, you got the Lego book. And he was reading through the Lego book. Tell me, look at this. Look at this picture. Look at He's got horns. 
He's got a, he's obviously in an obelisk shaped like body structure. Yeah. He gets into like this apparatus where it's an obelisk, and all of you who understand any type of Masonic symbolism or occult symbolism, the obelisk, which is the phalus, the generative force. It's the it's the erect. It's, it's the, the erect. It's, it's, it's like, supposed, you know, it's, it's the erect penis, which is that's I can't I can't say penis. That's a correct term. That it's it's the generative force behind everything that's going on that they believe is happening. Well, yeah, it's a driving force. Just like, you know, men have a penis so we could actually infiltrate the yeah, woman yeah. and actually create life. Yeah, the generative force. Yeah. And look at that. Obelisk, obviously shaped form right there. Right on the, uh, let's see if it's gone up on the chat yet. If it has, I'll, I'll, I'll point it out on there. Look, look at his helmet. Boom. Giant horns. A Baphomet horns right there. Look at an all-seeing eye yep. right there in the middle. Red and black. He's got a red cape. Right there, look at that. If you're in the chat right now, check that out. Look at that picture. Lord Business. And I can't believe it says that right there. I can't yeah. believe it says that. Here we go. Here we go. Lord Business's Guide to Being a Good Boss. Here we go. Control everything. Oh. If you want something done well, you might as well do it yourself. Know that you are always right. Never listen to anyone else's ideas. You're the best. Dress snappily. To be the part, you have to look the part. No one messes with anyone who's wearing stilet, stilet boots and shoulder pads. Okay. Because that's what he's wearing in this little thing. And then he goes, the craggle. This is Lord's business super weapon. It has the power to glue the world so everything can stay just the way Lord business likes it. There it Forever. Is. Only the th only one thing can stop craggle. The legendary piece of resistance. And if you want to know the legendary piece of resistance, you can check out the Lego movie. And you can look at the underlying story of the Lego movie, and uh, it's pretty it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, then there's the, there's the good cop, bad cop mentality yes, that they right try there. to push off on you. Get the, the, go show that to the cameras right there. I mean, yeah, we got the good, good cop, cop, bad cop. cop. I mean, that's... I mean that's just what it is. I he's mean, got like a two face, as in like a normal, like a like a Batman type of two face, where he's yeah. got he's a smile on one side and like a big sunglasses on the other. With like hey, what does it say about bad cop? You go bad cop. When Lord Business has dirty work to do, he calls on bad cop. His latest assignment is to catch a special. Is to catch the special, and if bad cop doesn't do the job, Lord Business definitely won't show him his good side. Capture the special. What is this all? It's the piece of resistance that they're looking for. And to find the master builders. That's the bad cop's mission. It says, find master builders, discovering the hiding places of every secret underground master builder. Restore law and order. Lord business rules are law. They must be adhered to. That is scary. That it's out there in the open for children. That's scary for children to actually, you know, actually go through this. And the funny thing is, if you ever seen like the movie The Matrix, which is this movie is kind of weird, is like they have other worlds that they like break into. Like they're stuck in their world and they have to break into like the Wild West Legos or the Space Legos. Legos yeah, and too. There's like the Batman Legos in there. It's a good movie, you know, it's, and it's a good movie. I'm not gonna say it's a bad movie. You know, I I've played Legos all my life. I enjoyed Legos, but I now have come to an understanding about things, and I can now see it when it's in front of me. And the Lego movie is definitely a revelation of the method and externalization, externalization of the hierarchy and basically telling you what they're going to do. You know, and here's, uh, here's the, we talk about the master builders, what that actually means. Uh, when Lord Business came to power, he banned all creativity. He ordered bad cop to hunt down master builders and those who weren't captured were forced into hiding. Now, that's, now that the special has arisen... The time has come for the remaining master builders to unite against Lord Business. I mean, you know, everything that you see in, in this book, and now they're pushing it out on the media and through Hollywood and everything, is pretty much, you know, more security. Yep. You know, they're pushing their agenda. They're kind of subconsciously pushing their ideas onto us. They have an agenda. Yes. And they want to maintain that agenda. And look at all the movies that are coming out, too. It's all about revolution. Yeah. And, like, standing up and having riots and resistance. We do not want a revolution in this country because you never know what's going to come out of a revolution. Yeah, you're going to get like the extremists create the revolution and then they're just going to use that against us. Yeah. It's like use peace, use your words, you know, organize. And that's the one thing, the good don't organize. Like I mean, yes. yeah, some of them do, but they don't organize like the bad do because they think like, okay, well everything's good and I mean, just take it from an even personal aspect, we're good, we're out there and everything, and we're trying to organize a little bit. But you see a, like, a lot of other good people, and, and they don't like almost need to like worry because they're happy, they're yes. in good moods. They're like, okay, well, we'll do this and this. 
But they don't organize how the evil organizes. The or evil will subvert everything and organize underground. And they'll lie to you. Yes. They'll cheat you. They'll steal from you. But the good will be right to your face and honest and a real person. Yeah. And that's what and they, they and they're easily trampled over because they are too good. Yeah. And that they won't stand up or do anything in defiance of the bad because they are so good. Yeah. And the thing is, you, you know, they'll try to make you make it seem like they're the good, but they're really the bad. I mean, that's just that's just how it is and they want to put you on their side, but really they might not be on your side. And that's scary because you can't trust them then. Oh yeah. You definitely. can't trust anything that they say. These people have been liars from the very beginning and we people need to come to grips with that that they have been lied to for many years and for a long time and Many people can't understand that they've been conned, and they won't admit to themselves that they have been conned. And even with anything in life, political, business, even with your own personal life, people won't admit that they've been wronged. Or and it's, a, it's a hard thing to get over, too, because I was actually having, uh, I had a meeting yesterday with another one of our radio hosts over here, uh, Gary from Intentional Living, and uh, we were actually talking about people that kind of go through their whole life knowing something, and then figuring out that they've kind of been lied to their entire life, it's... It's tough to get over. It's, a, it's that part of that like, awakening moment, you know, where you mm -hmm. come to grips with, hey, I've been lied to, I've been wronged, but I'm not going to let it hold me back. I'm going to now, now that I have knowledge about it, I'm going to do something about it. Mm. And, uh, you know, what I wanted to bring up today, too, um, a little talk about like a current event and everything that's been happening lately, is a lot of news has been floating around about the Jade Helm 15. I've heard about it, yeah. Jade Helm 15, um, it's totally legit. You can look it up on the internet. Um, July 15th to September 15th of 2015, the UN and the United States military will be going to the streets of Texas and a couple other states, I believe, but I think they think, I think Texas a, I think is think the hostile state. Yeah, Texas and Utah mm -hmm. have been in Clinton deemed hostile. I don't know why. If you understand why, call in, let us know. If you know anything about the Jade Helm, yes, let us know. Yes, that's what Anything on the Jade Helm 15, it's very new. There's a lot of controversy out there if it's just, you know, their normal preparation and everything, or if they're trying to kind of, you know, they're getting the civil, uh, the civil uh, civilians into these workings now. Yeah. They're actually rounding up citizens. I've seen that video. Everybody go on YouTube and look up Jade Helm 15 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And it shows you right on there. It's nighttime. There's a guy in, probably in a building with a camera looking out the window showing military marching a line of people through the streets, single file. And where do they put all those people? They march them up. And you can see in the video, they march them up into like little vans. Little white vans. Little white vans with no windows. You know, like those work kind of vans that everybody has. Like those small car vans almost. Like those little small carish vans. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they get in them and they drive them away. Yeah. They what's got going helicopters on? Flying around. Yeah, what's going on? And then supposedly this the, the that's small compared to this Jade Helm thing. It's supposed to be thousands of troops and stuff out there. So they're what supposedly they're doing is they're trying to make a way as going through urban areas and not trying to be detected is what they're trying to do, is what I've heard. Is that supposedly what their mission is, not try to be detected in civil, civilian populations and kind of move under the radar so people don't notice they're there and they can extract people and move people without having anybody know about it in the middle of night. What does that have to say? What is that showing people? Uh, I believe it's something, as John F. Kennedy said, uh, guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. Yeah. Weird. What are they doing with this whole Jade Helm 15? Why are they now having a military operation on American soil? You know, the weird thing is, too, is that... Um, but they say, oh, we're training for overseas things. Mm -hmm. First of all, why would you train in an American city for an overseas thing. Like the whole culture, the whole way the whole city is, mm -hmm. is so different. I think they're planning something here in America. Well, not to mention, I, I, mean, I don't know what it is yet. You have the UN moving uh, military in and moving their tanks, UN tanks and Humvees and special you know, utility vehicles yes. into the United States now by the, the train load. You see them, you go on the internet, go look it up. I mean, if you want to go see some videos of the UN moving around equipment in the United States right now. Yeah. Go look it up. I've seen it personally. I was driving down I-90, almost close to where uh, I was driving back from the Wisconsin Dells, for all the people out here in uh, uh, Chicago land area, coming back from 90 in the Dells. I saw a large flatbed truck with two Humvees on it, driving down the street. UN Humvees? 
No, I think they were American Humvees. They weren't very distinctly marked, but I saw they were camoed out and they were definitely Humvees. Okay, okay. And I was like, okay, there's... I mean, I do know that military, I mean... I mean, I get it. They, they, they move stuff around. True, I understand that, but I saw it. It's, it's out there. Mm -hmm. It really does happen. So. But, I mean, the UN definitely has stuff. I mean, you can see they get train loads of, I think, the Humvees coming in. Those UN Humvees with the closed-off back just moving in the street, I mean, moving through the train tracks while, like, wow. citizens are watching them on trains just pass. Yeah, I did just see hundreds, that video. Like, hundreds of them. And it's like, why does the UN have all this here? Why does the UN have Russians here? Or why, why are the Russians training with the United States right now? I thought we don't like the Russians. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought there was a big cold little, like, Cold War II going on. Yeah, and now, now, uh, now we have Russians over here. I believe we have about 10,000 Russians over here, allegedly that are training with special forces and training with the UN and military forces. Wow. Don't know what they're training for, but it's weird. It's weird that we're having foreign nations come over here. And not to mention, when I started looking into this about the UN, I came across the UN Small Arms Treaty that was signed by Obama and John Kerry. Oh, God. And actually, the, uh, they made a national gun registry, which means any, uh, any country that signed up with this UN Small Arms Treaty, gets to find out every single user of a gun in those certain countries. So it means if I get a gun, Russia gets to know that I have a gun. So what does that mean? Like, do they come over here then and try to uh, try to do something? I don't know. Well, stickers on the mailbox. No matter or? what, they they are definitely moving towards their agenda. And we're trying to explain what that agenda is. We're trying to figure it out. But after this, we'll tell you what their master plan is and what they actually do want. So right after this, we'll let you in on the creepy, creepy truths. Back at you, 23 minutes past the hour worldwide. Information here. This is your host, Alex Gabriel, and my wonderful co-host, David Sick. Here Thank we you for introducing me. No problem, David. I, I thought I'd introduce you on this one around. And, uh, you know, everybody... You know, we're not best friends or anything. We're just brand new newcomers. Yeah, I don't, even, <laughs> I don't even know who you are, but I just set up the, the books that we brought in the studio today for the for the camera if anyone wants to check out the podcast of this. Yeah, definitely check out our podcast. We have a recording, a camera in here, recording everything we're talking about, everything we're showing. We got document cams and the whole thing. So if you want to see what's going on behind the scenes... And Inform Nation, you want to see what we look like? You want to see what we're So wearing? go on to uh, Facebook.com slash Inform Nation Live, and then you can scroll through our feed, and you can see all our podcasts on there as well, too, and any up-to-date information that we're bringing anybody. Yes. But uh, what we want to talk about here is um, <clears throat> what their master plan is. Master plan, um, and what they want to do with us master builders. I would consider ourselves master builders, maybe. Yeah. We're being we're too creative for them. We're yes. just too creative. I like art. And they want to put me away because I like drawing pictures. Because in the New World Order, people who talk like this, about, like us, like you out there, people who think like us and like you, cannot exist. Because we promote freedom, we promote fro free market ideas, we, t we talk about out-of-the-box subjects, we make people think. And I know you out there as well kind of like what we're talking about, and you like t thinking in the same way, and you think that things aren't going the way it is, people like you cannot exist in the <coughs> world order because we're it's thought criminals. We're thought criminals and thought police. I mean, if you ever go back to, like, Minority Report, I mean, Tom yeah, Cruise Yeah, look at those movie. old movies, yeah. Tom Cruise did a movie, Minority Report, having, you know, pre-crime, you know, just having a crime for the idea, or 1984, George Orwell, mm -hmm. having thought police, you know, going around, oh, you're thinking this? Oh, you know, the establishment's not going to like that, so we're going to have to put you away in one of these camps. What kind of camps do they want to put you in? Re-education camps? They want you to put in forced slave labor camps or concentration camps or some people might call them FEMA camps. Mm -hmm. But there's a real name for these camps. Yes. There is a real name for these camps. And what's the real name for the camps, David? The real name that if you want to look up and verify that FEMA camps are true, don't look up, you can look up stuff, look up the word FEMA camps, but you're going to get some, you know, conspiracy theorist stuff and a lot of disinfo about it. But if you really want the real truth on what's going on, Google right now or at another time, Civilian Inmate Labor Camp Program, and separate, second one, Emergency Centers Establishment Act. Those two things right there, Army.gov, it'll Here tell you. 
I just pulled up the PDF by them. Yeah. It's actually on you, you can, armypubs.army.pubs. You can download the actual ver do actual documents. Yeah, here we go. Summary of change. Here we go. Signs and responsibilities. The headquarters. Make some administration of an editorial changes. December 1997. Provides Army the policy and guidance for establishing civilian inmate labor programs and civilian prison camps on Army installations. Discussing sources of state civilian inmate labor. Uh, and it goes on and on to tell you about what they would do, uh, what sort of rights that they have, what sort of people are allowed certain jobs inside these camps. And it's ridiculous. I mean, a lot of people have heard of them as FEMA camps, and FEMA camps gets the idea it's more of a, more of a conspiracy. But there really are, there are these camps out there. And the, we don't know what they're for. I mean, if you guys can remember back to World War II, we're not, you know, we're not far, actually, we're not, uh, what's the word? I can't even think of the word right now. I'm tongue-tied right now. Uh, but we're not um, talking about the the Japanese. Yeah, yeah. They we've put, already done it. They put Japanese people in camps. Yeah, in America. Most of them were all American citizens. Yes. I mean, and they put them in camps. I mean, what's that about? I mean, it's not like we haven't done it before. Why wouldn't we do it again? And that's uh -huh. the scary fact about it. That people are like, oh, we, they would never put us in camps. But like they did already. I know. They already put us in camps. That's the American people for you. Quick, they already know they can get away with it. Quick to forget. They are quick to forget. How many people forgot out there that, that plane went missing? Anybody remember that? Yeah, what happened to that plane? Nobody knows. Even know what happened to that plane? I haven't even looked that up. I don't even know what happened to that plane either. That's just a whole little, like, diversion thing to talk about. Like, Wasn't oh, there two things with the plane? Yeah, yeah. yeah like it, it, went, like it went missing, right? And then it, uh... And then there was another one that And then, got, like, one went down. Yeah. Right? And then that other plane went down recently. Yeah. What's with all these planes going down? I don't know. Maybe they're trying to do something with transportation of air. Or maybe they're trying to restrict transportation. Or... Wait, hold on. I thought after 9-11 they had all those security things for terrorists. Why are all these planes going down? I thought their security was so well set. Yeah. I don't know. After 9-11 everything changed. I mean, if you, want to, if you really want to know about the New World Order, look at 9-11. Go watch Loose Change yes. on the 9-11 thing. And it's weird. I mean, it's... Almost blatant, right inside your, in front of your face, that they knew about it, or they had something to do with it, uh -huh. or they let it happen. Because as Rob Emanuel says, with crisis comes great opportunity to push in new laws and policies on your citizens. There you go. And that's the scary thing that they will use false flag attacks. They will use you know subversion and everything to actually infiltrate their ways into your life. And that's uh, that's not good either. That is not good. That is and not. My mic is falling like over here. Right <laughs> There we go. It's back up again. All right, I got a fix now. But I mean, you know, their master plan. If you want to go look up uh, online right now, look up the Georgia Guidestones, Guidestones. and I'll actually read off here. I'm look that up too. What the Georgia Guidestones actually say? It's actually written in a few different languages. They call it the Ten Commandments of the New World Order. Yes, they do. But wait, I thought the New World Order was just a conspiracy theory. Nope, not at all. It's only for the uh, the real crazies out there that don't believe in the New World Order. Just look at the back of your dollar bill for G6. But here we go. The inscriptions on the Georgia Guidestones. It's in Georgia. You can go check it out. And here it, was, here it has the Ten Commandments. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. 500 million. That's weird. I thought there was like 7 billion people on 7. this planet. 7.5 billion. So we got to kill off 7 billion. Well, I don't know. How are they going to do that? I don't know. Maybe with these camps or bioweapons. Maybe bioweapons. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. If that's not happening today, I don't know what else is. I mean, reproduction wisely, you know, Planned Parenthood, uh, big, whole, a big thing always. Yeah. The abortions. Yeah. And then. Then you have the vaccines that you're giving your kids. Sterilizing and, them. Not to mention, I mean, the food sterilizing us. I watched a documentary. Um, I can't think about what it is off the top of my head. I'm sorry about this. But I watched a documentary that talks about, uh, from my age, and my generation, I'm 24, uh, compared to my parents' generation, uh, my parents and my dad and everyone being 40s to 50s, is that actually our sperm count and reproductive organs have got smaller over one generation, and actually the, the sperm count has decreased 50%. So that means my dad had 50, or you know, double the sperm that I had. And it's like, what is going on? Like, what am I eating? What am I taking that's bringing the pop, you know, bringing my sperm count down, which makes me less likely to have kids? It's the hormones and the food and the water. It's the BPA. Mm -hmm. It's 
and it's you know, the whole and, here, and here we go. I was I was talking to my mentor yesterday, and I had a really good question for because I thought about this, and we were talking about it, I believe, at my house. And I was saying, well, you know, everyone, you know, resorts to you know being a good, well-fed population is in height growth. You know how how our height is, mm -hmm. and, and you know right now, what average height for man is about five ten, six foot, somewhere in there. Supposedly we're tall, we're lean, we're very nice in stature, except we're very obese. Um, fact of the matter is, is back in the Neolithic Revolution, we lost height stature. Um, so pre-Neolithic Revolution was the Paleolithic Age, you know, the Paleo diet and everything, how they eat from the land, from the earth. But the Paleolithic man was actually very tall in stature. He was the height that we are now. 5'10", 6 foot, very lean, very muscular. You know, he's enduring, he's got stamina, he's a lean, mean, fighting warrior machine. And then, agriculture came around. Neolithic Revolution. We sat down, we started growing grain, we started herding animals, and we started creating modern day society. It's like we didn't need to be <clears throat> lean, mean, fighting machines anymore. Yeah. Because we are in a more stable environment. Yeah, Food so it was more stable. So what ended up happening, though, was actually in the Neolithic Revolution, our height and health declined once we started eating grain. Actually, we started having hyperplasia of the teeth. We started, our stature started lessening. Our ligaments started becoming not as strong. And actually, our height dropped down to 5'5 five five for males and 5'1 for females, which that's five inches off of what it used to be. But now today, we've brought it back up again through a lot of the early uh, 20th centuries when you know riches started becoming more prevalent in the earth and affording more food and transportation yep. and meat and vegetables Sanit and everything. Sanitation, Sanitation health. health started becoming a lot more prevalent, so actually we started gaining our height back, bringing us to where we are today. But now as I see it, man is getting taller right now, but is it because that we're in good health, or is it because we have the hormones in our food? I think they're trying to say, hey, look, you guys are getting taller, so we must be feeding you well. No, I don't think that's why. I think it's because all the hormones, you're trying to offset my shrinkingness with the hormones to boost me back up, if you get what I'm saying. I mean, if you look at the hormones today, look at these kids, man, going through puberty. Going to, into puberty at like a young age? Yeah. I'm talking about pre-teens. Pre I'm talking about 8, 9, 10 years yeah. old. These children are going into puberty. Yeah. And it's because of the hormones. They're pumping these kids mm -hmm. up with, with growth hormones that are making you go into puberty at a young age. So what are you getting involved in sexual activity at a young age? Yep. So if you wound up getting pregnant, there's the abortion, the quick out, you know? And then if you get an abortion, you're less likely to actually have a kid after that. And there's so much damage that's done to like the reproductive system of a woman during an abortion. Mm -hmm. Cancer rates increase on that. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to number three here. Unite humanity with a new with a living new language. What is that? English? I, is it? I mean, look I at mean, American English language. is like the world language right now. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to speak business, you're going to speak English. That's anywhere. Where, like, that's where you, a lot of people... You can speak English anywhere all over the world. If somebody knows a little bit of English, they'll be able to understand Then they you. also say business talk a lot of, like, Chinese or Japanese as well, too. Some of their dialects as well. Because, actually, they do a lot of business over there. I don't know. You As a businessman, I think you need, like, English that's and Chinese. Chinese. I mean, those are the two like, hugest languages, I'd probably say, right? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be, like, Italian. No. I mean, Spanish is also a big language yeah. with a lot of like diverse like uh, dialects and all because of the whole, the whole South America, Mexico, everything south and then of you us get Spain, speaks Spanish. And Spain. Then it's, a, it's kind of a different dialect with those. Uh, let's go on to number four here. Rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things tempered, and all things with tempered reason. So they want to rule your passion, your faith, and your traditions. With all things tempered reason. Mm -hmm. Is that basically saying that you have to reason with passion, faith, and tradition? Like, you must use reason? Passion, faith, and tradition with all things tempered reason. Is that like an end to religion? That, I don't, that, that, that might be the reason? worldwide religion. religion. Yeah. I mean, we're, do, we're definitely coming upon a new age of religion. I mean, they even call it like new age Christianity. Or the new age movement that yeah. people are seeing. Yeah. Anyways, here we go. We'll go to number five here, and then we'll kind of throw a little uh, summary out here. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. I mean, I agree with that, but the fact of the matter is, I know they have some weird idea about it. Of what their fair yeah, laws Yeah, what actually just, fair yeah, means. Yeah, and like protect, the, protect people. 
So yeah, protect. All you were all you have to say is protect people. We don't need protection. Yeah, I'm responsible for my own protection. Yeah, I don't need you to protect me. And that's what they'll start using. The the people who will start taking the words like safety and security and security and protection and you know protecting your family. The government's going to use words like that to push in more policy to control your life and to control, you know, the police state. Yeah. They're going to want more police on the street I, for your protection. And, and you're like, oh, well, they're there for my protection. No, they're not. They're there to keep you shut up. Yep. That's what they want you to do. Shut up and sit down. That's all they want. That's how the, that's how the establishment exchange is. It, it, what's the word? The establishment guarantees their own protection mm -hmm. is about you not thinking and rising up. Here we go. Number six. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. So here we are. We're talking world court. There you go. That's his initiation right there. That That's world government. That's a new world order right there. And let all nations rule internally. So that there's not going to be any more standing armies anymore. There's just going to be domestic security forces. Mm -hmm. And then... If countries have little bouts with each other, they'll go to the world government mm -hmm. and they'll ex exchange it there. It's like Homeland Security for us That's over here. Right. That'd be our domestic police over here, Homeland Security. security. Yep, definitely. Number and then seven. here we go, number seven. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. What does that mm -hmm. mean? Avoid petty laws and useless officials. I mean, I don't like petty laws. I mean, Just, yeah. again, I, I have to somewhat agree with this, but then it depends on what sort of nature they're trying to draw out of Yeah, this. like what do they consider petty laws and useless officials? Yeah. Like well, your county sheriff? Yeah. That's constitutionally based? Yeah. That's considered a useless official for them. Because we are just want our domestic police in there. We don't need your small town police forces anymore. Yep. We're going to run this federally. We're going to run this world nationally or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Here we go. We're going to number eight here. Of Balance personal rights with social duties. Oh, your personal mm. rights are now up for balance. Yeah. You don't have them. They can maybe be balanced off. Because they're with your social duty. So based on your social duty, which is almost meaning your, your job, based on your job, your J-O-B, your job, that you need to balance your personal rights around that job. So it's like... <laughs> Not everyone gets rights. It's like if you... It's are socialism really almost then. Yeah, that definitely is I socialism. I mean, because socialism says they'll put you in the job that you're meant for, whatever the hell socialism says. Yeah. So pretty much it's going to be like, we're going to tell you what you can and can't do since you have this job. And if now. those of you out there who have read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, that's basically what's going on, that you will grow up and you will be told what job you will have and what rights you will have, and that's it. You don't have individual thought. Here we go, number nine. Prize truth, beauty, love, Seek harmony with the infinite. Now, that's yeah. almost something I slightly agree with. Yeah, I mean, I do agree with that. You definitely should prize the truth and the beauty and the love and seek harmony with the infinite beings that we are. Now, I'll come back. I'll come, you know, I'll come back to my my thought on this after we read number ten here. Be not a cancer on earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Now, you know, I was talking to my buddy. I, I think I talked a little bit about the previous show. And we were talking about, you know, why people out there are being ignorant towards, you know, certain ideas in society right now, like eating better, taking care of yourself, researching, looking up the police state. Mm -hmm. And people are just kind of being ignorant to this stuff going around. And the fact of the matter is, is supposedly that the elite want to herd out the ignorant. They want to herd out the masses. I mean, they definitely do. It says, number one, maintain humanity under 500 million. Yeah, so maybe they're saying only 500 million of us are allowed to stay here, and we're not going to let them be ignorant, you know, POSs, and actually, you know, people who think that, um, you know, that they don't have to listen to them. I don't, I don't know what they want. I mean, what if it's one of those things where it's like, you know, they're doing... I don't know, man. It's one of those things where you got to think, like, is it good what they're doing or is it bad what they're doing? Like, are we out of balance? Are we a cancer on Earth? I mean, look what we're doing to the Earth right now. Are we a cancer on it? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're putting up these buildings, we're building concrete, we're wiping down rain, we're taking down rainforests, we're putting pollutants in the water, pollutants in the air. You know, we're killing off our farmland. The GMOs are destroying the normal crops. Yeah, the I mean, GMOs are destroying the insects in the environment around them. So, I mean, do have the people that came up with these inscriptions for the Georgia Guidestones, and this is why I think there's this power struggle on top. 
I think that some people do want 500 million people on the planet for a good cause. For the reason being that, you know, we, we can't be out of balance with the earth or we're going to crush the earth. We're going to yeah. kill it. And we can't. We can't be out of balance. And then there's the other people who are greedy. The people who want more and more and more and they'll do anything. To get it. Yeah, so create more slaves, create more people to produce their products and produce their wealth for them. That's true. So, I mean, you know, where does it lie? Where do we lie? Where do we lie on this subject? I mean, as informed nation... We want to bring all sides here. We want to bring all sides to the spectrum. I mean, you know, to, you know the Illuminati is to illuminate, to enlighten. Mm -hmm. I mean, what does that mean? I mean, it's all... It's like, yeah, it's like saying, oh, you're part of the Illuminati, so therefore you're bad. But who are we to call these people bad? I mean, at the same time, like, the, if you think about it, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to do evil things, I like being evil. Mm -hmm. Nobody does that. Like, they, they are just doing what they think needs to be done. In order to keep a balance on Earth. In, in order to keep, yeah, this whole thing going. Like, yeah, the whole, after World War II, you know, when the whole baby boomer generation came in, and it just spiked the population up. Well, hey, supposedly the baby boomers, a lot of them actually, the government started funding people to have kids because we were in a time of war. And in a time of war, we need more people to fight in the war. And so they supposedly... I didn't know about that, but Supposedly hey. pay parents and pay people to have kids and start kicking off this baby boomer revolution, or baby boomer revolution, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and pretty much, you know, fulfilling, you know, filling the United States with boatloads of people to fight, to build, to build weapons, to build things that take over the world. I just thought about that. Wow, because after World War II, what came back to America? It was the whole manufacturing boom mm -hmm. that happened over here. So we needed people for jobs, you know? Mm -hmm. we, there was going to be a lot of construction. Big suburbs yeah. went up after the... Wind. Housing. Housing. Like the, the appliance whole, market yeah, went up. The whole American dream came mm -hmm. into, into spectrum. So we needed that ba that boom of population. So yeah, wow, I never thought about that. Yeah, right? I, I didn't think about that either. My friend Phil brought it up to me, and I'm like, well, I, I never thought about that. Hey, Why they call, how'd this whole baby boom just happen? Like, yeah. How did it just happen? Like, just so of a sudden, we just had this boom of people. Yeah, I can say that, yeah, you know, a lot of people, when they came home from war, afterwards, you know, when everybody came back from the war, there was, wanted you know, to start families they wanted to start families and stuff like that, but also, they needed that in order to get to the whole American boom that happened. So, wow, I never thought about that. Maybe, they, maybe they ushered in the world police by that way, too. Now we're the world police. We have a lot of people. We have the biggest military here. I mean, it's, it's scary with uh, what actually military is these days. And I don't know. I don't know if the baby boomers has anything to do with that. I don't know if I'm being considered a con crazy conspiracy theory right now. But it could be true. So you always have to take it with a grain of sand or a grain of salt, whatever the term is. I think I've heard both. Yeah, um, grain of salt. Take but everything. I mean, they, they have these in scriptures down in the Georgia Guidestones, and, and you could look it up. And it was apparently purchased by Elbert County in October 1st, 1979. Although the German Mountain Travel Association's history says the monument is located on a farm of Mildred and Wayne Milinux. I don't know what the hell that means. The monument was unveiled in March 22, 1980, before an audience variously described as 100 or 400 people. And so, the guy that created it, um, you know, there's a guy that supposedly created this, but it was a false name that he created it under. And here it is, person, here we go, in June 1979, unknown person or persons under R.C. Christian hired Albert Granite Finishing Company to build the structure. R.C. Christian, I don't know. But after this, we'll be back. Uh, we'll talk about a little homework for next week, a little research we want everyone to do. Uh, but after this, uh, we'll be right back with you. Hello, hello. This is Alex with Inform Nation. And this is David with Inform Nation. Here we are, informing the public on pressing issues. And big ideas. And here we are, talking about who are they. Who are they? I don't know. I like to do different voices every now and then. Um... <laughs> But yeah, um, we wanted to talk about a little homework assignment for the week. Um, also, if you want, like, a, for this week, go check out, like, the Georgia Guidestones. It's really weird. Like, this is actually a monument 
in Georgia uh, that was put up by R.C. Christensen, which is pretty much a fake name, a screen name, you know, stage name, just like actors and actresses come out with, mm -hmm. in order to keep his real identity, you know, concealed from the public. Um, but, you know, it's, it's the summer. It's coming up on the summer, and a lot of families take family vacations. Yeah. So if you're looking for a good family vacation, just on the way down to Florida, you know, just stop over in Georgia and check out the Georgia Guidestones <laughs> and show your family what the new Ten Commandments are going to be for their lives. Yep. Because if we don't do anything about it, those are going to be your kids. Those are going to be your kids' Ten Commandments. Yeah. And they're going to have to bring in the population down to 500 million. What's going to make your kid one of those 500 million? Let me ask you that. What's going to make your kid? Yeah. If you care about the world, you care about your family, if you care about your kids, your friends, anyone around you, your peers, your colleagues, what are you going to do to help them? Yeah, that's what big. What are you doing for the future? Are you allowing somebody else to make the future for you? Or do you have free will and free choice? And are you a free person? With Can't free you, thought? With free thought? Can't you? You have power. You can make the future what you want it to be. Yes, you can. You can make the future what you want it to be. And don't and don't let they stop you and hold you back. Yeah, screw they. Because they are all about control and keeping you down. But rise up. You not, get not, the not, power. Not in a revolution type of stance. Yeah, but rise up with your voice. Yeah. Rise up with our first constitutional right. Freedom vote. of press. Vote with your dollars. Vote with your dollars. Don't worry, be aware. Yes. And you know, we're going to hit you with a lot of these little slogans. These little, you know, don't worry, just be, be aware. aware. Vote with your dollars. Or, I don't know, any other ones we come up with. I just lost all train of thought. We don't want, <laughs> yeah, well, big thing I was talking about before I didn't actually get to get to was we don't want a revolution in this country. Yes. We want a restoration of constitutional Republican government that America was founded on that made America prosper. 100% in the first 150 years and then look after the next the past 150 years of what's happened. It's socialism and de degrading of our freedoms because prosperity or adversity makes men prosperity makes monsters. You know the thing is um, yeah we don't want a revolution. We, no. want, we want what we had. We want what we always did have is a republic. Yep. We want the republic back. Mm -hmm. That's all we want. We don't want any, you know, big changes or anything. Well, it's going to take some big changes, but we don't want anything different than what we're already just supposed to have. We don't want to fall into the whole Bolshevik Revolution trap where everybody was like, you know, we got to rise up and get these people. And look what happened after the Bolsheviks took power. Look, look what happened in the Soviet Union after that. That's what they're aiming to do here in America is a type of revolution to get everybody to rise up. So then they can say that, look what's happening. People are rising up. We need to come in and control it and put it down. And the, and the Jade Helm, good evidence that it could be happening because they're starting to mobilize troops in a type of martial law type of mentality about it mm -hmm. that can be construed as that, look what, we're t look what they're going to do in the future. It's not going to be, maybe it's not going to happen this year with this Jade Helm thing, but it's subconsciously getting into people's heads that it could be happening down the line. And you know, the thing with re restoring is that I'm going to put an analogy out there. It's like we signed a contract when the Constitution was written. Mm -hmm. We signed a contract about what we wanted, what we expected, what rights we were granted as a free nation. We signed a contract. Our founding fathers signed a contract for us as citizens to live by and adhere by. True. Now, in the last 50 to 60 years, we've been really taking a big old crap on the Constitution and varying off from actually the stipulations that it points out very directly. Yep. And so what we need to do is go read over that contract again and say, I want what I was granted. I want what you signed. I want what our founding fathers signed. I want what this country was built upon. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not, then we're going to have a big... Uh, I don't even know. We're definitely gonna have. We're gonna run into a big problem. We're gonna run a big problem. We're already starting to run into problems, and people are starting to see it. Yeah, financially, you know, we're running problems financially, agriculturally, we're running a bunch of different problems. Physically, physically, emotionally, emotionally. Are we happy? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's all you know the pursuit of happiness. Every man has a chance to have the pursuit of happiness. And that's for making your life the way you want it to. Yeah. Be. And is that even true anymore? 
the pursuit of happiness. Is it? Can we pursue our true happiness, or are we kind of like stuck? Are we stuck in what we re- on kind of what the system tells us? I mean, what's his name? Edward we, Bernays went a long time ago and started almost making decisions for us. With, As we yeah. said, with putting bacon and eggs, making them a breakfast option, giving women, you know, smoking cigarettes so they could have women's rights, and all this because he understood that the masses, supposedly, he thought they were idiots, and that they couldn't make right decisions. But if the masses were just informed and actually told and actually, like, brought to attention... Like these big pressing issues True. on what they should do, but they, they can fed, make they can make the right decision. If they weren't fed like dumbed down yeah. garbage, yeah, they would be allowed to make proper decisions because they would be informed. Yeah, I definitely believe in that. Good. So that's what we need to get back to. We need to get back to the press. We need to get back to you know having a Second Amendment you know prevalent in the United States, telling Can't, the truth. Yeah, don't sugarcoat it. Yeah, stop sugarcoating everything. Nobody, I don't like sugarcoating. I was like blunt, honest. Like if you don't like me, if you have anything to say about me. Just tell me. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to help, you know, what did, uh, what's his name say? John F. Kennedy. You know, it's not a mistake unless you repeat it again. Yeah. Or unless, unless you, you choose not to fix it. A mistake doesn't become an error unless you, you choose, choose not to, to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, we're all here, to, we're all making mistakes, but we need to point out those mistakes and take another step towards making a correction. We need to call they, them, out for making those mistakes. Yeah saying that we know you're making mistakes, We're, we got you on notice, and we don't want it anymore. Yeah, you, we understand that you might have been subdued into doing this or blackmailed into doing this, uh-huh. but then tell us who told you to do this. Yeah. And we'll go after those people. Because somebody needs to pay for what's happening in this country. Yes. Somebody or an organization needs to be taken out of power, needs to be sat down and told this isn't how it is anymore. And this is how we're going to have things. Because that's what we need. We need to bring freedom back. And the only reason we t- we're talking about they today is because we want to tell you who they are. Yeah. Because on this show we're going to refer to a lot as, you know, they or them or the people who are trying to bring down on you. And it can even be personal people just around you, too. The yeah. people who are bringing you down personally. The haters out the there. The haters out there, you know. Haters going to hate. That's just what they do. Yeah. Trolls are going to troll. That's just what they do. So just stay away from them. Stay away from those people and just give them little insights along the way. And sooner or later, one day, they'll grasp what you're telling them and they'll be like, hey, you know what? That person, that person was telling me the truth that one day. Maybe I don't hate what they were saying anymore because something happened to me in my life that I connected the dots. And it was like, wow, that person was a real person. He told me the truth. He might have sounded crazy at the time. He might have sounded idiotic at the time. But he was just speaking from what, you know, common sense was or what he knew was the truth. We need to bring common sense back because common sense isn't so common anymore. No, it's not. It's ridiculous that common sense isn't common. And I don't like using the term, oh, we need, they they use all these these political terms. We need common sense reform or common sense gun control. Common sense, like, what is that? Like, why do we need common sense control on anything? I thought it was, if it was common sense, then it would just be known, right? Yeah. We don't need to be told that. I mean, the common sense to me is if I have a gun and somebody comes into my house, I have the, I have the right to protect myself. Yeah. Common sense is if the government has guns, I should have guns too, because the reason the Constitution has the Second Amendment is because they were worried about the government becoming too big one day. Yeah. What does the Second Amendment really say? It's not, it doesn't just say the right to bear arms. It says a well-regulated militia. Militia. Everybody out there, look up what the militia is. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's what it really says, people. It gives you the right to have the power as the military control in this country. That they can't come around and take all the guns and make everybody a bunch of serfs and tell them what to do is because you are the militia, you are the backing and the power behind you everything. You are the resistance. Yeah. The, the resistance. Whole, the whole info wars. Yeah, the resistance. You're the resistance. But we're, we want to we want to use words to be the resistance. We don't want to use guns because once we start using them, they're just going to come in and take them away. I so, know. So please everyone, keep the gun. Keep it, you know, in a safe place. Don't be shooting people. Don't be revolting. Don't be making rash decisions. Yeah. And just use your words. 
But we, what we want to do for the, uh, the homework this week here is uh, we're going we're gonna to bring in a little, uh, little, a little homework, homework for this week. Here we go. We just got like a little boom. We can plug something in over here. Yeah, here we go. Live radio, everyone. Yeah, sorry. We, we are it? live. School time. School time. Hey. Uh, homework time. It's Monday. Back from the weekend. We're back. And so what we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to have you, well, first off, my homework assignment for the week was check out the Georgia Guidestones, look it up online. If you want to bring your family down there, bring them down on a nice trip. You show them the Georgia Guidestones while you're on your way to Florida this summer. <laughs> and uh, David's homework assignment for this week is... Wow, I just drew a memory bank. I'm really? It's about, about Gen 21. And oh, community. yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Perfect. Um... <laughs> Um, homework assignment from this week from me is look up Agenda 21 and what it's doing in your community because it is out there. I'm telling you. Look up community development and stuff. Look up what's going on in your community and if Agenda 21 is being taken place in your community. I can guarantee it is. It's probably subversive and small, but point it out. Go to a city council member or, or city council meeting. Point it out. Point it out that it's Agenda 21. Let people know and try to change it. But anyways, this is Inform Nation. If you want to check us out on Facebook.com slash Inform Nation Live, we'll be there all week. And if you want to check out our podcast, we'll be there as well. Don't forget, support the sponsors. Support the other stations on this show. Cop Talk coming up at 6 o'clock. There we go. And here we are. Inform Nation will be back with you next Monday at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time or whatever it is in your country. Around I, the world. Around the world. Have, at your time. Have a good week, everyone.